Well guys, welcome back to Watches and Wheels YouTube channel. Tonight we're going to do something that's Mopar related. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the Chrysler EVA, or Electronic Voice Alert System. But um, back in the early 90's, I went to a junkyard with a buddy of mine and looked in every single car in there. There must have been 12 LeBarons and K cars and whatever those things are. And um, I was able to find two of these voice alert boxes. I was always fascinated by them. I've always heard people that were really annoyed with them. And I've always thought they were really cool. And my intention was back in the day to uh, maybe put one in one of my cars because I always thought they were cool. But it's pretty speak and spell ancient technology that's in these things. So after, I don't know, let's see, 2006, my buddy prints off the... Now we're going like, what, 10 years later, in 2006, he prints me from all data the wiring schematic and pinouts for these boxes. So, and they have been here all these years, literally until tonight when I decided to waste a lot of hours and <laughs> figure out what goes where and how to wire it to make it talk. And, um... Uh, so tonight we're going to power it up for you. We got well, I got one of the boxes open to show you what the inside looks like, and um, we've got a battery here and a speaker, and uh, we're going to power one up and get it to talk. And uh, afterward, we do that, which is maybe I don't know, not super exciting, but I'm interested in your feedback if you've ever had a car with one of these in it, or are familiar with them or know if there's still even a demand for something like this if people would even want to you know entertain the idea or maybe you have an old Chrysler product something that doesn't work anymore and you need one of these now I know there are two versions there is the blue one which is I don't remember how many commands it says I'm thinking six or eight and then there's a black one which is larger uh, which says a whole lot more but um, yeah well, yeah, should we just fire it up and let it, yep. let it chat? See what uh, happens. So I've got, I've got three of the commands already wired to talk, so you'll get to hear them. Are you ready, Gail? I'm ready. All right, well, here we go. Your fuel is low. <laughs> There's one. Your engine oil pressure is low. Yep. Prompt service is required. Yeah. Like, shut it off quickly so that it doesn't throw a rod. Your away. washer fluid is low. And that's it. That's, that's all, all it says. That's all the things it says. Now, after looking at the wiring sch schematic, I thought that it would tell you if your parking brake is on. And there is another one for door ajar. Now, when we first were hooking this thing up, I got it to say your door is open, and then when you take the ground away, it will thank you. And it only, the box only said it twice, and it won't say it again. And I don't know why. I mean, I wired it up according to the door switches, so when it sees the ground, it should turn on and talk, but it doesn't want to talk. So I hooked up the other one, I opened this one up to look inside of it to see what it was going on with it. There's a whole bunch of set of contacts in there. And uh, there's a volume control for the speaker, but I don't see anything wrong with it to know why it wouldn't say that your door is open. And that kind of sucks because Gail and I were hoping to like, at least get it to make it do its thing for you guys. Right, it would have been cool to hear. Yeah, so we only got to hear it twice. And then earlier when I was testing this thing, it freaking, uh, the battery was low and it actually said there's a problem, voltage problem. I forgot it to say said it was electrical. Electrical problem. It actually understood in the, in this old technology that the voltage was low enough that it would cause a problem. And that's the crazy part is that I actually had to go take the battery out to the garage and charge it up so we get it to work. I even hauled all this crap out to the Polara to run it on another battery to make sure that I wasn't like screwing myself, like messing my mind up. But it cannot get it to say your door is open anymore and there's also when you're overheating there I noticed on this schematic there's another box or, or the, the, the dash cluster but uh, the way it's wired for your temperature I, I don't I think I need a temperature switch or I need an interface to tell this that you're overheating so I'm assuming it would say engine coolant hot or engine hot you know right. that, that's it 
but what we discovered is that it won't talk anymore. Once it said what it needs to say, if you start the engine back up, I don't think, and, and obviously if I'm leaving it plugged on, it's not saying your oil pressure is low, your washer fluid is low, or, or you have low fuel. Well, I'm like, why do you suppose that is? And I'm thinking, well, the way it was designed, I thought there might have been a delay. So I'm standing out in the garage cold. Your fuel is low. Looking at my watch. Brian is cold. Your engine oil <laughs> pressure yeah, I am is cold. Low. Is so I'm standing there for two minutes looking at my watch, seeing if that maybe it was on a timer. Your washer fluid is low. But that's not the case. It makes it. It says what it needs to say, and if you were paying attention, then you, you know you're been. low fuel, or you're running out of gas, and you're walking, and it doesn't say, "Ha ha ha ha! I told you, idiot!" It doesn't give you. It doesn't you say get one warning. Yeah, it gives you. It says it one time and one time only, and that's it. It will not do it again until the ignition key is turned off, which you just turn the key off, and now you turn the key back on. And if these items are in need of attention, right? Example: oil pressure. Your fuel is oh, low. Talk told said fuel first, so it it makes it Your alternates. Your engine oil pressure is low. Prompt service. Is required. Service, you ain't gonna make it back to the dealer before it throws a rod. Right. You're not. So your washer fluid is low. So I got to thinking and saying the gale after I'm standing out there freezing in the garage looking at my watch that there is no delay on it. Now I'm asking all you guys out there, whoever finds this video and maybe now or the years to come, to tell me in the real car if you've got a LeBaron or a turbo, whatever you got, and uh is that what actually happens if it does your washer fluid is low i'm assuming that when you go to first start the car up that it's only going to tell you one time until the next time you shut the car off turn the ignition off and turn it back on so i'm assuming chrysler did that for a reason is because it would probably drive you batshit if it is right. kept tell i mean how often is it going to tell you i know i know before you even get to the grocery store you're already getting mad at it <laughs> and that's the funny thing about this is I didn't know this, but uh, I ended up finding out that back in the day, if people who ordered a Dodge or a Chrysler that had this EVA system in it, if it annoyed you from go, and I could see that it has the potential to maybe possibly piss you off in some way, especially if it kept repeating, which I don't know if it was supposed to or not, but obviously not, that uh, the technician could actually take the passenger kick panel out and reach up, and if you look on the side here of this box, there's a little tiny micro switch right here. And that allows you to turn this voice command system off so it doesn't drive you batshit. Can we see that again, Brian? Yeah. So there's a little tiny micro switch that goes on the side. So the technician pulls the kick panel out and he reaches his hand up there. It's mounted in the down position. And then he will flip it off. And now it'll never tell you anymore again <laughs> of your problems. You know, because it's depressing if you've got low oil pressure. Right. Especially if your car is running and it tells you that. You got problems. It, and that's the thing. It's Your fuel is low. Not a priority right now. Who cares if it runs out of gas? Your engine oil pressure. This is, is a big low. This is this is the this is this is the one that's required. gonna cost you the money, especially if you got a warranty. You know? You threw a rod bearing, you fool. Your washer fluid is low. So that's it. So I don't know. So I don't know. I'm curious what you guys gotta say and there is a Yeah, let us know if when do you guys have a working one out there? Well, a car that actually, or you can do that. Now, and if you go to, to play, make a video, and I've seen videos on YouTube where you put, put the people had them in their cars, you can only get them to say specific things because unless you drain the washer bottle out or took the plug off of the sensor, you couldn't get it to ever say it. There are some items on here that this, this wouldn't say all the time. And to really actually, I wish the damn one would work for the stupid door for the because we got it to the say door it twice. Is ajar. Yeah, door is open and then it will just hang and then as soon as you take the, the the wire off it will it knows that you did that and it will actually say thank you. And ours said it twice and neither of it. them they don't they don't so who knows like did that circuit like cook? Is it is this I mean you gotta look I think how old these computer piece how old this is. Right. Would one expect those things to die and and fail? I don't know. Would, what would happen if oil pressure decided it didn't want to work no more and you're driving down the road because those cars, if I remember correctly, did not have an oil pressure gauge. 
So you relied on either an idiot light, which most people don't even notice, or the fact that it's going to speak loud enough to tell you there's a problem. It's really not giving you any more information like, you need to pull over right now. You're not, 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 let's wait till we get to the next exit. Right. No, that's, that's not what happens. No. You're pulling over immediately. So, yeah, so there you go, guys. There's uh, our video of a Chrysler Dodge EVA for you. So, that's it. Yeah, and like Brian said, if you have uh, something you'd like to say, well, we'd love to hear about it in the comment section. So Yeah, I would like to hear people's input on these things and what they've discovered. And if there's any other links to any other videos, because Gil and I sit and we watch this stuff, because it's pretty fun to see other people playing around with this shit. So. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for watching. We will see you in the next video. Have a great night.